Imagine a celebration unlike any other, a banquet overflowing with unimaginable delights, a gathering of loved ones both present and past, and an atmosphere of perfect joy and fellowship. This isn't a scene from a fairy tale, it's the breathtaking promise that awaits believers in Christ, the heavenly feast. For centuries, the image of a grand celestial banquet has captivated the hearts of Christians. It's a promise woven throughout the tapestry of scripture, from the prophetic pronouncements of Isaiah to the intimate teachings of Jesus and the awe-inspiring visions of John the Revelator. This isn't just a metaphor for some distant reward, it's a potent symbol that speaks to the deepest longings of our souls. Embark on a captivating exploration of this cherished promise. We'll delve into the rich biblical foundations of the heavenly feast, tracing its significance from the Old Testament prophecies to the New Testament fulfillments. We'll see how Isaiah described a banquet prepared by the Lord himself, a table overflowing with the finest delicacies, a foreshadowing of the divine bounty that awaits. On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. Isaiah 25 6. The verse describes a lavish banquet prepared by God himself, with the finest food and drink. This imagery is seen as a symbolic representation of the abundance and joy that await believers in heaven. Jesus spoke about the concept of a future celebratory banquet on several occasions, though he didn't always use the term heavenly feast explicitly. Jesus frequently used parables to illustrate the nature of the kingdom of heaven. Two parables in particular resonate with the theme of a banquet. Luke 22 14-19 see us when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave, thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave, thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus commanded us to share communion, and to think back to his sacrifice for us, as often as we gather. But he also said this meal should prompt us to look forward with eagerness. Jesus was looking forward to fulfillment in the coming kingdom, and he often talked about a future feast. Consider what he said in these two gospel passages. And I confer on you a kingdom, just as my father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, Luke 22 29-30. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 8 11. The Bible's final book gives us a glimpse of heaven, where we see a table and a banquet, then the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19 9. What is that promise about heaven? Well, a feast assures us we will be fed, that we will never go hungry, never go without. It also promises togetherness and reunions. In many homes, the dinner table is the heart of the home, it is where people draw together. Heaven's table will reunite us as well. Everything that separates us from others right now, distance, busyness, language, pride, death, those are gone at God's table. We will finally toast a complete victory over sin and death and everything that separates us from God and each other. So, this communion is a rehearsal for a meal that will finally become real and perfect in heaven. Imagine how wonderful that will be. How the heavenly feast will look like. Imagine the most amazing party you can think of. Now forget the guest list, the decorations, and even the food. The heavenly feast isn't about those details, it's about the feeling. Picture a place filled with love, peace, and happiness. Everyone there is filled with joy, reunited with loved ones who have passed on. There's no sadness, no pain, just pure contentment. The Bible describes the feast using food imagery because it's something we can all understand. It talks about a delicious banquet with the best food and drink you could imagine. But it's not just about the physical food, it represents the feeling of being completely satisfied and fulfilled. Instead of chairs and tables, think of a beautiful, welcoming space. It could be a garden filled with light, or a vast, open field. The important thing is that everyone feels comfortable and included. The best part? You get to spend time with God himself. Imagine getting to know your Creator, feeling His love and acceptance. It will be the ultimate celebration of life, love, and everything good. Now, we can't know exactly what the heavenly feast will be like. But the Bible gives us enough clues to know it will be amazing, beyond anything we can experience here on earth. It's a promise that gives us hope and something to look forward to, even when life gets tough. The imagery of the feast is rich with symbolism. 
it speaks to our deepest needs, the desire for sustenance, for connection, and for a life free from want. It represents the complete fulfillment of God's redemptive plan, a grand celebration marking the victory over sin and death. We'll explore the concept of the marriage supper of the Lamb, Revelation 19.9, symbolizing the intimate union between Christ and His Church. The banquet is a time for shared stories. Imagine conversations that transcend earthly limitations. People from across time and cultures reminisce about their lives, the challenges overcome, and the lessons learned. There's a sense of unity, a recognition that all paths ultimately led to this place of love. Imagine a symphony unlike any heard on earth. The music might be a blend of celestial sounds, laughter, and the joy of reuniting with loved ones. It resonates within each soul, a perfect harmony reflecting the divine order. There's no hierarchy in heaven. The focus isn't on rank or position, but on acts of love and service. Perhaps those who displayed immense compassion in life find themselves helping others navigate the wonders of the heavenly realm. In the heavenly banquet, God isn't just a guest of honor, God is the very essence of the celebration. Here's how God's role shapes this eternal gathering. God's boundless love fuels the entire banquet. Imagine a radiant presence emanating warmth and acceptance, a beacon that draws everyone in and makes them feel cherished. This isn't a distant deity, but a loving force that fills every corner of the heavenly realm. The concept of food transcends earthly limitations. There might be a sharing of celestial delicacies, but the true sustenance comes from God's presence itself. Being bathed in this love fills a person's soul with a sense of perfect contentment and belonging. Imagine a symphony unlike any on earth. God, as the source of all creation, might orchestrate this celestial music. It could be a blend of laughter, shared stories, and the joy of reuniting with loved ones. This perfect harmony reflects the divine order and the unity that God brings. In heaven, service takes on a new meaning. There are no ranks or positions to strive for. God, through their all-encompassing love, inspires acts of kindness and compassion. Those who displayed immense generosity in life might find themselves helping others navigate the wonders of the heavenly realm. The heavenly banquet isn't a fleeting event. It's a state of being, a continuous celebration in God's presence. God's infinite light banishes any darkness, leaving a sense of perfect peace, free from worry or fear. Ultimately, God's responsibility in the heavenly banquet is one of infinite hospitality. They create a space overflowing with love, acceptance, and joy. They ensure that everyone feels welcome, cherished, and part of something far grander than themselves. The promise of the heavenly feast isn't just about a future reward, it offers profound hope and encouragement for the challenges we face today. In a world filled with suffering and loss, the knowledge of a coming eternal banquet reminds us of God's unwavering love and faithfulness. It assures us that our struggles have meaning, and that ultimately, joy and peace will prevail a foretaste here and now. The beauty of the heavenly feast is that we don't have to wait until eternity to experience a taste of its blessings. The Lord's Supper, also known as the Eucharist, serves as a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. As believers gather to share bread and wine, we participate in a sacred act of fellowship, commemorating Christ's sacrifice and anticipating the ultimate celebration to come. Whether you're a seasoned follower of Christ or someone just beginning to explore the Christian faith, the promise of the heavenly feast offers a powerful invitation. It encourages us to live with purpose, knowing that our lives are not in vain. It inspires us to deepen our relationship with God and share this incredible hope with others. Let this exploration of the heavenly feast ignite a fire within you. Let it fuel your faith, strengthen your resolve, and guide you towards a life lived in anticipation of the ultimate celebration. As you invite others to join you on this journey, together we can build a vibrant community of believers, united in the shared hope of the heavenly feast. Feeling inspired by the promise of the Heavenly Feast? Make sure to subscribe to the King's Gate YouTube channel now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video.